Sir Christopher Chope, OBE, a former barrister and now Conservative Member of Parliament for Christchurch in Dorset. A keen Brexiteer and climate change sceptic, Sir Christopher was chairman of the Thatcherite Conservative Way Forward Group and has been serving in the House of Commons on and off since 1983. And I'm delighted to say he joins me now. Sir Christopher, thank you very much for giving up a chunk of your Sunday evening. Thank you for inviting me on, Mark. Uh, you entered Parliament in 1983 under Margaret Thatcher, and she prevailed over an economic crisis, and she won a war. Uh, do you think Liz Truss has any hope of doing the same? I do, and I think that your introductory remarks this evening should be put on a videotape and sent to all my Conservative parliamentary colleagues as a wake-up call as to why they should get behind a Liz Truss and unify our party and ensure that when the general election comes, which may be two years hence, that we are uh, seen to be fit for government again. And uh, we've just got to hold our nerve. These have been a very difficult period over the last couple of weeks. Uh, but let's not forget that it was the Prime Minister who decided that we would control energy prices uh, so that households didn't go into the winter fearing that they would not be able to heat their homes and businesses were not in a position where they were saying they were going to have to close down because they couldn't afford their energy costs. Those are the big things that she has delivered. She's not getting any credit for that. The downside of what that delivery was was that the, the international markets were slightly spooked, not least because they, they were unable to be sure as to the exact cost of that subsidy because it's all dependent upon a global energy costs and a global gas prices. So let's not lose sight of what the Prime Minister has achieved and let's hold our nerve. And I've been very disappointed this week that the Prime Minister herself seems to have um, departed from her philosophy on which I, which I supported, which caused me to, to vote for her and so many others in the party to vote for her. And I hope we can get back on track and we will get back on track if people hold their nerve and, and we unite together. Uh, Sir Christopher, you sound like a Liz Truss Spartan. Are you strong in number? Uh, who knows? Uh, the, one of the problems at the moment is there seem to be very few people who are being either invited or accepting invitations to come on the media and try and explain the, the situation. And, and um, I've been prompted in a sense over the last week to, to get involved in this because uh, Dan Hannan had a piece in the Sunday Telegraph uh, eight days ago, uh, basically saying that what has happened to all the people who are uh, should be defending the current approach of the government towards uh, the energy prices and the economic situation. They all seem to be um, hiding away. And, and my approach to politics ever since I was first involved and before I was elected in 83, I was leader of Wandsworth Council. My approach has always been that we should uh, have the courage of our convictions. We should speak out and do what we think is right. And there's no point in, in hiding away. However, Liz Truss without tax cuts is like Batman without the Batmobile. What's the point? Well, I take, I take, I take that point, um, and that's why it's such a big a disappointment. The question is, is Liz Truss without tax cuts, has she decided that that's um, a withdrawal from the, the, uh, the, the, the contest, basically, or, or is it a tactical retreat? Uh, pending a further advance. And I hope it's just a tactical retreat in the face of the uh, markets and that we will be advancing forward uh, within the next six months or so on her agenda of uh, higher growth and lower taxes. Uh, many of my viewers, Sir Christopher, and actually notably Anne Widdicombe earlier in this programme, uh, have said that they feel that this modern Conservative Party just isn't conservative anymore on the economy, on social issues, immigration, uh, the net zero green agenda. Um, what's happened to your party? Uh, has it shifted to the left? And what do you think the implications might be? Because lots of my viewers are saying they won't vote Conservative again. Well, I, I, I share their, their concern. 
I, I think that over the last uh, several years, we've uh, allowed a whole lot of people to become parliamentary candidates and get elected as Conservative MPs who are in their heart of hearts social democrats. They don't really understand the principles of conservative philosophy. They don't understand the importance of allowing people to have the space in which to live their own lives without the nanny state bearing down uh, upon them. They don't understand the importance of low taxes so that people can have the money that they earn to spend in the way that they choose. So those basic fundamentals are not shared by a lot of my parliamentary colleagues. And I think that's coming out uh, in, in the, the mix in these recent days. So, no, I share, I share the consternation that there is. Um, and the difference is that when I got elected in 1983 and there were over 100 new conservative MPs in, in 1983, uh, almost to a man and a woman, we supported the philosophy of Margaret Thatcher, which had proved to be successful, that the, the government needed to reduce uh, taxes and to enable the people and businesses to grow and use their own enterprise. I acknowledge your loyalty to the Prime Minister, Sir Christopher, and that's admirable. But if she were to go, is there a name you can think of that you would support as, as, a, as a, a, a coronation candidate, somebody that the party can get behind? Uh, Mark, there's no prospect of a coronation candidate. That's for the birds. Um, basically, if we get rid of Liz Truss, then we're going to be landed with a general election. And uh, if we had a general election today, obviously, all the, uh, the, the chances are that we'd end up with, with uh, Keir Starmer. So the, the, there is, the alternative to Liz Truss is Keir Starmer. And that's why my colleagues need to get real about this and realise that there's no way in which we can have a, a coronation. I'm not going to support um, any of the people who have been put into the frame. And a lot of my colleagues are not going to do that either. We're not going to have a, we're not going to have an agreed. It's not like what it was in the 1950s and 60s, where you had uh, people in dark suits went along and they decided that Rab Butler wasn't the right person to be prime minister, and it would be better to have Harold Macmillan. Those sorts of days are days are over. And apart from anything else, that would mean that the party membership and the country would be completely left out of the decision, and that would be thoroughly undemocratic and very destructive for the Conservative Party. Uh, so, Christopher, briefly, if you if you can, are you suggesting that if a new prime minister, a new leader, were foisted upon you, you might vote with Labour? in a vote of no confidence in the government, uh, that you and colleagues might actually support the dissolution of Parliament and a general election? Well, I'm, what I'm suggesting is that there's no way in which a new leader can be foisted upon me or any other member of the Conservative Parliamentary Party. The, the Conservative Parliamentary Party um, has a system whereby if there was a vacancy, and there isn't a vacancy, and I hope there's not going to be one, if there is a vacancy, then people can apply uh, to become the leader of the Conservative Party. We then have a process of elimination. The final two candidates are then uh, put to the to membership. And all that process takes is you know, the best part of a couple of months. And who thinks it's in the national interest to spend a couple of months of further um, internal discussion within the Conservative Party when our country is in crisis and we've got a war raging in Ukraine?